everyone and welcome to the Iron TV Women's Podcast. This is episode eighty two. Um we are using a different like film and platform we're using Zoom <laughs> this week. As we we usually use Skype but you could see from last week's podcast that didn't really work very well. Yeah, um, we're just gonna try uh try something new, trial and error it. You yeah. Know. It was just doing? Emma's chin last week, so, you know. <laughs> to be fair, when we did it, like, when we did it the first time, That's Skype fine. looked fine. Like, it didn't yeah. actually look that different, but obviously, yeah. it is, and it is. Who knows, but let's ho- hopefully this works better, you can see both of us. Um, very wide angle lens. Like, yeah, I feel like I look very pasty, on. I feel like I don't look like this in real life, I just look very red. I think it's just the lighting. It is. Should I switch your light on to see if it makes a difference? See if it makes a difference. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's made it a little bit better. <laughs> we'll leave it on. Man's natural light like, coming in from the window. I know. Well, I could potentially just move myself forward a little bit because the window is literally just there, but I feel like there's a bit of disruption. Yeah, we'll start it now. We'll just crack on. Go with it. Um, It's officially day two of... Full okay. lockdown, not full lockdown, because you can't leave your house for, like, essential items and, like, for, like, once a day for exercise, but, like, other than that, you literally can't do anything else. It's How are you coping? How are you feeling? You know what? It's actually getting to me a little bit now. Yeah. Just because I love being outside and I hate sitting inside all the time. Yeah. Like, I'm missing, like, football training. Like, I went onto the onto the massive field near where, near where I live. And just took a football and went for like forty minutes, and just like I need yeah. to just do something, and I was yeah. like, but then I got home and realized I've already used up one my one side one like once a day outside pass. I've already used it and I used it first yeah. thing this morning. So now I'm like, oh, what am I gonna do? I haven't been like out out today. Like I've washed my car in the past. Yeah. that's as much as the outside world I've got today. Um, probably will go on a walk later, but it's so frustrating because the weather's lovely. Honestly, like fair enough, you can still go outside and like your garden yeah. and stuff and enjoy the weather. But this is like if we was if if we was both in Liverpool now, we'd probably go to like Sefton Park or whatever and get everyone together and go for like an ice cream or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But like, we did that quite a lot like last summer. Didn't yeah. We? Like, a, a group of us would go out every now and again, and it was nice. But it's been like really, really bad weather. The last like four or five months. Oh my god. And like And then it's like April showers, but it's not. I feel like April showers happened in like February. January. <laughs> Literally, yeah. yeah. So now we're it fit like today, my mum was saying that it's gonna get up to like nineteen degrees or something and I was like, yeah. to me that feels like a summer's day. But yet yeah. all we have to do is sit inside. Like I just wanna be able to go for like a bike ride or walk walk round on like a long dog walk or whatever mm. but like fair enough we're, we're gonna have the rest of our lives hopefully to do that so I guess it's only yeah. short term now that we need to be a bit more sensible with the whole thing yeah and we're like both fortunate as well that like we've both got like gardens and stuff like yeah. that so we can't go and sit outside like I feel sorry for those people who live in flats yeah I know because you've literally only got one I know it's, it's England not everywhere has a balcony yeah or like a terrace it's so true. um There'd be a lot of people who literally have like maximum one hour a day outside, literally. and then it's stuff on the dead out the window. A bit of fresh air. So what I don't know if it's the start. same where you are, but where I am, that I just see so many more people going out for a walk. Like I know the whole like the object mm-hmm. of this is to get less people outside, but to be fair, where I live is just close to where like a big massive walk, like a dog walk or a, a cycle path is. So. Yeah. I kind of judged that on what I would see normally as to what I would see now. And over the last few yeah. days, there's just so many people, like, walking. And I guess, like, that's probably their once a day, so they're not actually doing anything wrong. It's just more people are doing it because they're restricted to not do it, yeah. which makes them want to do it. And, like, they can't go yeah. to the gym. They can't go to any of their, like, gym classes or anything like that. Apologies to anyone who's just yeah. seen the internet connection sign come up. We're all right. Um... But yeah, I feel like it's one of the things that when you're told you can't do something, you want to do it. And then, then everyone like wants yeah. to do it now. But, That's yeah. it. That's what I was to my mates last night. And I was like, I'm quite a homebody anyway. Like, I'd, I've got no issues being at, being at home, like, at all. Like, I'd happily stay in bed and whatever. But I think it's just the fact that there's no other option. 
Yeah. That you're like, oh my god, like I wish I could go here or I could go there or like 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 you said, like today. Like me me and our Hannah probably like go like somewhere. Just for, like just go for shopping or something or whatever. But you yeah. just can't do it, which is like fair enough, you understand the reasons why, but yeah. it's frustrating. I in response to you all, like have you I haven't seen anyone that I don't normally see. Oh yeah. If you get so me, it's, so it's like, just the same not, really. Uh, there's not a lot of us around, so like where I live, who have dogs anyway. Yeah. Because they like I've got like a handful of us, and I'm like I've only ever seen the usual people. Like one of yeah. Up, so. That's fair enough. Yeah, a lot of the people around by my, where I live are that old, to be fair. So they're yeah. all isolated for twelve weeks. You know, be seeing them. The thing is, the, the thing that annoys me the most is, and I tweeted about this yesterday. The pictures that are coming out of like London and stuff, it's just like mm. I understand these people still need to go to work, but you're telling me every single person that was on those tubes has to be in work. Yeah. It just doesn't seem it's a bit right. Like, it's like it's the the message was for like essential workers. So in my eye, essential workers are only like NHS staff or carers um like along those lines of people whereas like they'll also there will be some office workers who will be classed as essential staff as well but you just don't know if yeah. you get what i mean so like, there's a lot of people so like this if you sky tv broke for example say if you've got sky tv and it broke and you needed an engineer to come out and fix it are they class as an essential worker i have no idea you, I, I, I don't know no but in the in the eyes of some of the people, they might be so like it's the finding the balance of what's an essential worker and what isn't. So all of those people on those tubes and like whatnot will their their bosses might have said, "Oh, we class as essential workers," yeah. but bosses like the public probably don't know what they do for a job. So like a lot of them will be just like carrying on workers who who are just carrying on. Yeah, like my dad's a builder. He's not classed as an essential worker. I don't think. But he was saying the other night, well, am I, am I not? And, like, some construction sites are still going on. Yeah. But for his jobs that he was doing, he, all the builders' merchants are closed, so he can't get the gear he needs to do the job. So, therefore, he's off because he can't get the gear. Yeah. So, it's it's what people... It's, I think it's a difference of opinions. That's, like, the... That's why where the land's a bit, like... Don't know, like, faded, dodgy, because, like, some people have different views on what's essential yeah. and what isn't. So I think yeah. I think if you had a list of like this is essential, this is not essential, then people would be able to sort of understand a bit more. It's essential for different 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 people, different yeah. like strands of business stuff like that. Like obviously, you probably need at least a handful of people to stay, mm. no matter what kind of is, because otherwise the businesses will just go go back. Especially like yeah, I think the the message is like if you can stay at home. And there's no need for you to physically be in the office. Then stay at home. Fair enough. Some people yeah. might actually need to be there, um, or are classed as you said, like as um, workers who need to be there, or essential mm. essential workers or whatever the term is. Yeah. Like my dad, for example, he's he's just an IT person, so he can work from home, and the whole yeah. of his company can work from home. So it that yeah. that works quite well, but then there's obviously there's other things that maybe if re- relying on like machinery and stuff, people probably do need to be there to operate the machinery. Yeah. But then you probably cut down how many people physically need to be in there. So you say five in yeah. at this time, switch over five, go it in later on, sort of thing. Yeah. But I know it is like it doesn't seem like there's a fine line in determining who needs to be where <laughs> and like yeah. what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, well, like, exactly, and like, I do admin at the hospital, so, like, because I'm on a ward, like, I am essential for for certain things, but I don't work full-time anyway, so mm. I'm not there full-time, but, like, I got a text off, um, the, like, it's called temporary staff, and, and, like, they were, like, if you can, any admin staff you want to work 20, uh, throughout the 24 hours of a day, so, like, I think they're asking for people who can work, like, if you can do, like, six till 12 or six till two you no know, like in the morning so you're doing like a full day shift but in the evening so you can so you only have like 
what you said, then you have like five members of staff yeah. in the day, like the max that you're allowed in an office, and then another five coming in the evening. So yeah. you're not like, there's not a department of like 100 people in at once. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I, think, I feel like that's probably the best way you're going to work here in terms of like going with the guidelines, but then like, it's a hospital at the end of the day, can't, it, you know, it's, it's can't going stop. <laughs> differently. Yeah, exactly. You can't just stop, you can't just close it. Yeah. I just think it's to people that it was like when it was a really sunny day a few days ago, like the first sunny day we'd had in ages, and it was one. Yeah. I think I don't know if it was day one of lockdown. It might have been. So it might have been I think it was yesterday. on Sunday. Sunday or Monday, oh, and it was Monday. like yeah, people were out in Hyde Park in London, and um, they were saying yeah. they're trying to tell people like this is not a holiday. This is actually something so serious. But yeah. people are being like, oh, it's a nice a weather. Let's go park. and sit in the park. Let's yeah. go do this, yeah. isn't this? It's like, well, no, that's not how it works. Yeah, kids are off school. But if they weren't off school, they'd still be at school. So they're not off yeah. school for any other reason than it's not physically it's safe not, for them to be there. Yeah, it's not like, it's not the six-week holiday, is it? No, exactly. But like, I was thinking, for kids now, until they go back to school, that is five months until September yeah, it's a long time. that is a long time for kids to be off school and a long time for them not really to be doing anything no summer schools yeah. no football camps no, no like day, just, daycare know. literally nothing apart from obviously the essential workers but yeah. it's like oh my god how I don't know like that is such a long time like even thinking about it for, for someone of our age that's still a really long time to go without doing yeah. anything yeah. so it's just well, bizarre well, we've both been at uni for like the last three years, so like we've we've had long summers. Yeah. Because you know, if we finish like April, early May, and then you don't go back to like late September normally, so that's a long summer. But like you can work in between that, or you can go places, or you go on holiday, or you do this, you do that. But you're literally, I'm literally sitting in my room, like there's nothing to do. Literally. Um. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be really tough. I think I think once people wrap their head around it, then like I'm sort of get yourself in a routine. Like I don't have a routine right now, so I think once I do get one, I sort of will be in the flow of it all. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people will be like that. I think it's just fine. Like like a routine, like a balance. Yeah. Um. It is let's difficult. talk some sports. Go on, go on. Oh no, I was just saying like inside. it is difficult to sort of figure out yeah. the routine, the whole thing. It's just yeah, because nothing about the situation is normal. No one's ever experienced anything like this before, and like it, yeah. it's really easy to say, oh, you just go about your day normally, but just do what you do at home. But in my normal day to day, I don't know. In the morning, I might go out to the shops with my mum, and in the afternoon, I'll take the dog for a walk, or I'll go for a run, mm-hmm. or I'll do some some work. But it's like well. I can't do all of them anymore so I've got to like yeah. pick one thing that I want to do and it's like well yeah. that's my routine out the window because I yeah. like to just go off and do something I can't sit doing work all day I need to like do some yeah. work go out come back then carry on I can't just do like yeah. a whole stint so yeah. I'm, I'm having to like watch series do something different like a walk around the garden like five times or play with the dog outside like I've had to do something but yeah, I think once everyone gets into yeah. a routine, it should be <laughs> better. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Um, some sport then. The big announcement that came out the last, I think it was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I like that. The Olympics this summer has now been postponed until next summer. Um, I think overall it was the right decision to be made. Yeah. Um, you know, they cancelled the Manjuros. Obviously, the seasons, like the football seasons and all the sporting seasons are all like on hold as well. So I think it would have been really stupid for the Olympics to just go ahead. I think in terms of like safety of like like yeah. athletes and fans at the same time, like it would have just been an absolute nightmare. If you think the amount of people that would have travelled to it, like not just the amount of athletes, but then you've got the athletes, the athletes coaches, the team members, yeah. you've got the fans, the you've got bodies, the families, yeah. you've got the yeah, the governing bodies, you've got presidents, like people mm-hmm. that are literally coming from all over the world to one yeah. place. And it's yeah. like how is that going to work when we're in like a global pandemic? So I think it's 
But my only issue, my like my only question, not an issue, the only question now is like, if it gets postponed to next year, what's yeah. gonna happen with the Euros? Well, that was one of the questions I've got down. So you yeah. have the men's Euros, the women's Euros, the Olympics, and then I'm pretty sure is it the World Cup that December or the following December? What year is it next year? Twenty one. I'm pretty sure the World Cup's next year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Men's World Cup is... Let me Google. Win- is Let like, me Google, you carry on. Yeah, so, but if if that is right, then if you're going to have those four major tournaments all within five, six months of each other, that's not going to be very plus. If... Oh, the FIFA World Cup is in 2022. Oh, uh, okay. So we don't have to worry about that. No, but still, but you've then, got both sets still, of Euros. Yeah, but then also, if in terms of the football season, if if and when this season resumes, it might not be till like July, which then means you've still got July, August, probably a bit of September to play. Therefore, next season will start later, which means it'll finish later. Yeah. So then, if it finishes later. And like athletes and players only gonna have like two two or three weeks in between finishing a season to then playing in an Olympics to then playing in a Euros. I genuinely don't have an answer for you. I don't know how they're gonna be able to fit all yeah. this in. Like even just talk you laying it out like that, it's like what like you can't It's a lot. Although like I guess the players are having their break now. Like, this is a long yeah. period, like, rest and recovery. But also, I think, going through the amount of emotions of a season in general without any disruptions, you need that break mentally as well as physically at the end. Because those players still know now, like, the job isn't done for any of those teams. Yeah. Like, the ones that are, like, Liverpool that might be winners or the ones that are facing relegation is the same yeah. as the teams like, in the yeah. leagues below. Yeah. Like it's it's physically really hard. So yeah, and I think that what what you don't want to happen is to everything sort of be compromised. You don't want the Olympics to be compromised, or you don't want to go to the Olympics knowing you're not in the best physical state as possible because you want to yeah. you want to win the Olympics. It's some it's something that people dream of winning, and it, it's such a staple event on any athlete's calendar. So you kind yeah. of don't want to get to the point where, like, these athletes aren't going there being like it's I, I, it's hard to explain it but they're not going to the olympics with a true representation of how they can perform because of other factors that yeah. have come into it i think that's going to be the biggest part because you don't want to compromise like the integrity and the the skill level of something as big as an olympics because if they've got a hangover from the season before or or the euros yeah. or, or anything like that it just seems that it might yeah. be compromised slightly but also you've got to take into consideration those, say for example, those players who are coming to end of their careers. So this summer, Kyle Leeds was probably going to go to the Olympics. Yeah. In if the Olympics is next year, is she gonna? She's like thirty seven now, isn't she? Yeah. Thirty eight now. She's another year older. Is she going to be able to go to the Olympics? I actually don't know. Is she gonna? Is she gonna? I mean, I'm pretty sure she's gonna be training to the best of her abilities right now. She's probably fitter than a lot of players. But like another another year older, it can't take its toll. Like so, like Jill Scott and, and stuff like that. Like for England, like the players that were probably planning on going to the Olympics next uh, this year. It's not gonna be the same set of players going next year. No, it will completely change, won't it? Because it's not just the older players, but the younger players coming through now. Like, so, like, Lauren Hemp, she probably wasn't going to go to the Olympics. No. As a starter. She might have gone as, like, you can take, like, a few, can't you? Like, like they did in the World Cup, but, like, the oh, She wasn't in the squad, but she went, didn't she? Um, yeah. But then, You don't know who knew's going to come through now as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Know. And it's the same. Same goes for the for the women's Euros. Like, if they're gonna prioritize the men's Euros next year and the Olympics, 
the women's Euros gets pushed aside, that gets pushed back another year. It's then 2022 when the women's Euros is playing. Yeah. And it's like, that's two years difference for a lot of players. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're not just taking into consideration, like, the tournament itself. You're taking into consideration the players, like, the athletes. Yeah. So it's, it's such a difficult situation. And, like, I've said yeah. this about the whole thing. Um, there's no sort of rule book for this. There's no, there's no, there's nothing to follow. This is a completely like isolated, um, like thing that's happened. So sort of everyone's making up what they're doing on the spot in a way. Like all these decisions are being made now based on nothing really that's happened before. Because they're it's being based a, on the next six months, not the next year or two yeah, years. Yeah, exactly, and no one has really any any idea of what's going to happen. No. In a few weeks' time, no. this might all be over. Probably not. But in a few months' no. time, on the other hand, potentially. But it could even extend further than that. No, Literally, no one knows what's going to happen. So I think... That's it. Yeah, I'd, it's such a difficult because you can't fit everything in in one in one window of a summer because mm. I think even if you're look, looking at something as little as attendances they probably won't be as high as what originally were going to be anyways just because yeah. of this virus and the effect that it's yeah. going to have in the long term so that's already an, an issue and then if, if, you're, if you're planning to go to probably the men's Euros and the Olympics if you're that much of a like a, a, a junkie that you like to go to all of them mm. twice or even three times if you include the women's in a summer is a heck of a lot of money especially when, up, when Tokyo's halfway across the other side of the world like yeah. you can't afford that every week can you so yeah. as I said it's all about you don't want to compromise the Olympics whether that would be talent or attendance or mm. money finances last Olympics for some athletes like as you said it's, yeah. someone's got a massive decision to make on their hands and I'm just glad it's yeah. not me. <laughs> oh, yeah, same. Like, it's going to be an app. It's going to be crazy. The next crazy. the next two years of sport are going to be metal because oh, yeah. everything's, everything's already, what, like, I'm going to so behind. Um, I'm not being funny, though. I think there's a curse on Goodison Park playing a women's game because it got cancelled twice now oh, due God, to human nature yeah. events. So I yeah. think this, there's a curse on it. Goodison doesn't yeah. want people, doesn't want women to play at the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> or the oh world God, doesn't. I forgot, about, I forgot about that. I know. I it's, just, it's I just it's easy to now. forget. Like it's easy to forget, especially for like, the poor women. Like where we're at right now. Like we're we're facing a hell of a challenge once that season starts back up again. If it starts back up again. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think if the Premier League does, it's more than likely. Yeah. I think, I think you've got to conclude the season. Because of the implications so it has on not just the teams at the top, but also the teams yeah. that are in the league below. Yeah. I think exactly that's what I mean. So, like, I was saying to you the day, like, Villa at the top in the Championship, I think. Yeah. So, they they really, like, progressed in the, this season. It'd be so unfair for them not to get into the top tier just because of what of what's going on. If you can't continue the season, do it. Yeah. Whether that and whether that means if people go down, that's something we're just gonna have to deal with as like fans and stuff like that. Yeah. You're just gonna have to like cope with that. But also just for like the likes of like Chelsea and stuff like that. I think Chelsea are gonna win it. Yeah. But then you've got like a good battle between Chelsea and City and Arsenal going on as well. So you've got stuff like that that for like those Champions League spots as well like there's so many other like it's like a knock on effect it. isn't it like is anyone going to win the FA Cup this season like just well, stuff like that the thing is when are all these things going to get played I literally don't exactly. know like there's no like you can't you can't put like a time so like the women's Champions League has been postponed the final to when it's, like it's been postponed but, but no one knows when you won't know for a while either. Just yeah, and like it's not like you can't just ha- you can't conclude the league and not conclude any of the other competitions. Like it just doesn't seem right. Hmm. I li- I don't know. I just the sooner everything returns back to normal, the better. Yeah, My graduation literally. got cancelled. 
yesterday. I saw. That was so yeah. upset. I was like, oh. Mine, mine wasn't originally until October anyway, so. Oh, you be, I think ours will be in, like, November. I, yeah. But, like, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Like, I, I've seen a lot of things from, like, unis, um, like, uni students being a bit, like, frustrated because, obviously, A-levels and GCSEs have all been cancelled. So, like, did you have end of year exams? Yeah. Have they been cancelled? No, they've got replaced with three essays. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. As well as a dissertation but to see, write. But see, that's it. So you've got a dissertation to write, you've then got three essays, and then you, had, you submitted something last week, didn't you? Yeah, two whatever. things last week. It's not stopped. Exactly, it's just, so. They've just given us longer to do it in. It's not exactly. stopped, though. That's what I mean. So, like, it, it, I, I get what people are saying because on one hand, as like as like a third year student, I'm like, oh, I'd love for I'd love for my dissertation to be scrapped. Same. <laughs> like, I haven't finished it. Oh I'm like, God. I've, I've still got another three weeks to do it, but I'm just like, well, what, what's going on? Do you know what I mean? Like, you've had other stuff to like sort of cope with in the last couple of days, but then A levels and GCSEs have been scrapped. But then I was thinking like. That must be hard on those A level students who don't know if they're going to university or not because their predicted grades might not get them onto the course that they want to do. Literally. But they but if they were to talk their, their exams in the summer, they might get the grades that got them onto the course. But then it, it's like, well unis can't just let, let you in. No, it, yeah. Um, on the what ifs, like they've gotta do it right, do you know what I mean? But then it's I don't know, it just seems it just seems really bizarre to me. My only, the, my argument with that is I would be, so, little story time. When I did my A-levels, I did absolutely shocking in my AS. Don't even know why. Like, first year A-levels, I did terrible. I got a D in photography. <laughs> it's that bad. Um, I couldn't tell you why. I revised so much, but I just think I didn't, like, grasp the way to answer questions properly. Yeah. So, I think I just did so much extra work, but if, that those would have ref- if 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 we were in that year now and that had happened in year twelve, going into year thirteen, I'd sorted all my like stuff out. I'd got it down, and then yeah. my exams get cancelled and they go off the predicted grades from the year bef- from like AS. I would have been absolutely screwed. I wouldn't have been able to go to university and I wouldn't have been able to yeah. even go to college. Like it was that bad. So luckily, like oh, yeah. I was able to proper turn it around and I actually ended up coming out with some really good grades at the end of the uh, end of year mm. 13. But because I had the time to sort of like I had a second chance to put it to put it back right. And obviously yeah. if I was sorry, if I was still in that situation, I'd have been felt so hard done by because I didn't get the chance to like make mm. it better. So so there's a lot of students oh, that will be in that position, like yeah. so many, and I proper feel for them because if it's like you know you can do better, but they're not yeah. getting the they're not getting the chance to like prove it. So I didn't even difficult. think about that. Yeah. When, for my my AS, I I did most of my A level subjects were mainly coursework, mm. so like I was okay. Um, I only had an exam in science. So oh, mine like, were literally all exams. Oh no, so, I, yeah. I did ICT, PE and um, science, so ICT and PE were coursework based. I think I, I I think I did have an exam at AS for PE, but it wasn't like, it did it wasn't like a large percentage of your yeah. mark, it was only like 20% or something yeah. like that, like it, it didn't really matter much, and like my coursework brought it up to like a good mark anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't even think about that, like people who are, who are all like, especially if it's like, I was going to take English A-level, yeah. I imagine. Uh, to be fair, I, m- me now would have liked to have done English A-level. Yeah. But Lauren, age 16, 17, didn't want to do, they didn't want to do it. Yeah. And so I was like, no. But, like, imagine that, like, English lit, like, A-level exam would have been stressful. Like, year 12, 13. So I get what you're saying now, but, like... Mm. If you did really shocking in that like mock exam, like I like the mocks were only, only like last week. Like I did the GCSE mocks last yeah. week with my old school, and all the kids did it. And those there's some there's some kids in there who didn't even write anything on the paper. Do you know what I mean? So they're getting their 
predicted grades based off that mock exam last week. Yeah. And then some of them would have failed it because they didn't write anything on the paper because they didn't think anything of it. Yeah, it just kind of shows that you have to literally try your best in everything. But it just, yeah. I, I think I'd, f- I'd be felt really hard done by. Because if I didn't, as I said, if I didn't have that second opportunity in the next year, cause it wasn't like I knew I had another chance, even if I did fail, like, the first part. I didn't fail it, don't get me wrong. Like, I wouldn't have been like, allowed back into, like, the next year if I failed it. But I was way yeah. off what I actually wanted, where I wanted to be and what I wanted to get to, like, get into uni. Yeah. So it was, like, for, for kids that have actually, like, failed it, they're in a big situation. It obviously depends on what they want to do. They might already, like, have secured an apprenticeship, not dependent on any of the results. Yeah. But it's it's even, like, just to go back on what you said about what you, like, it's nothing to do with, like, the virus, but when you said, oh, Lauren now would have liked to do English language, there's so many things now that I'd have loved to do. Like, I'd yeah. go back to school and do them if I could because it's, like, another yeah. skill. But at the time, I was like, I literally hate all of these. I don't want to do any of them. Well, I, I, I really hated year 12. Like Did you? Six form. I hated it. Wasn't anything to do with the school. It wasn't like it was just me in particular. Like I just didn't know what I wanted to do. So like I picked options based off, um, like me GCSE. So like PA, like that's what I, I was sporty. I liked PA. Um, I I was good with computers, so I picked ICT. And then the the next like it was based off brackets, wasn't it? So yeah. like it depends on your like, lesson plan. So you have to. Have, like three different options that fit around your timetable. So like the science was the only really one yeah. that like I could pick. And at the time I was like, oh, I'd like to be a physio or something like that. Like I didn't, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, fun fact, I actually failed PA at GCSE, so I don't know how they let me on to do A level. I mean, I don't. How, how did you fail that. GCSE PA? <laughs> no, I just didn't give. I just didn't give one. No, so I was just enough. like. To be I fair, was, some was, of the things were so hard. Practicals. Yeah, no, literally. Some of like, but, like the, the stuff. stuff I was just like It was all like I, anatomy I, and then how does like yeah. the body produce certain like different lactates and I was yeah. just like, Ugh, no. So like So like I used to be able to name like all the bones and all yeah. stuff like that. I couldn't even tell you half of them now. Literally. Do you know what I mean? But like that's it. I was I was terrible at like, Alexander's well. The only the only good uh, A level and uh, GCSE I got was English, so that's why I was going to take it at A level. Yeah. And then I sat down on the open day and I was like, no, <laughs> no. no, thank you. Oh so, God, like, I remember. I actually I had an interview uh, to like at the end of year twelve to go and be a teacher assistant. Oh my God, no way! In yeah, what? At like a, a, P, a PA. No way, like, that's uh, sick. And I took a day off six form to go to the interview. And um well I took the morning off and I went into six form in the afternoon. It was like a Friday, so I only had like one lesson. And when I walked in, the um, head of year was waiting for me. <laughs> and I was like, Oh no. And uh, as I was signing in, she was like, Where have you been? I was there to explain to her where I've been. Um and she was not happy. She was not happy that I was thinking about leaving. Um, my oh my school. god! Yeah, so that's crazy. So I, 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 get, I understand what you're saying now about the year twelve. So at the minute, it will be like in in panic. Yeah. Because you know they they might have to carry on with subjects next year that they don't want to do, and they don't want to like go into that in the future, which is really, which is really sad actually. Yeah. It's like just makes you lucky. With someone's education. Literally, it makes you lucky to think that it didn't happen to us. I probably wouldn't be sat here now if we had the same situation because I would not have made it to uni. (laughs) (laughs) I really wouldn't have. But here we are. I actually think, I feel like we're getting really nostalgic in this video, but we've not really got much else to talk about. This is basically just a big chat, so I apologise. It's like, the the weirdest thing, it's like, I, like, it's really, really, like, not, not like upsetting me that I'm going to cry, but it's really upsetting that, like, we don't get to finish, like, uni properly. Like, oh, I, I don't get to experience, like, coming out 
on the last day of like my final exam, it would have been on the 15th of May, I wouldn't have been able to come out and go like, oh my god, we finished, like, I've never walked out of uni knowing that that was the last time that I'd ever walk back into it, do you know what I mean? I get what you mean in that sense, like, yeah. I'm not really big, I don't like uni, I'm going to be honest, Yeah. it's just not for me, uh, I always say, um, it's like my family, I'm not like, I wish I would, I would took a year out after six months to sort of evaluate all my options, I just sort of panicked and went to uni, like, really lucky to be able to go and stuff like that, and don't get me wrong, but like, I don't know, like, I just didn't, I just haven't, I just haven't enjoyed my three years. But I get in the sense of like what you're saying there is like I didn't get my final lecture, I suppose, mm. to like sit there and like you just you go and see your mates and stuff like that again. But like to sit there with your lectures and like discuss everything that's happened over the three years. Like I didn't have any exams, but like that whole like you have like a whole euphoria of like coming out your yeah. final exam and being like, Oh my god, like I've done it, I've completed it, like I've completed uni, like I don't have to do anything else. Yeah. Whereas now we're just going to have to submit something online that's just going to be, it. well, yeah. you know, I've just like, uploaded the file. Like. Literally, like, we had, like, a grad ball as well where we were all going to go, and then it was at Anfield mm. Stadium. They would hire out a room oh, every year. So sick as well. Every year, like, everyone puts, like, dresses. It's like prom, but not. Mm. Um, And we had that book. Like, I'd pay for my ticket, which I hope I'm getting a refund for because be, it was 38 yeah, quid. Um, so I was like... Yeah, I was looking forward to that. And then, like, the girls that I live with, we were going to go, like, for, like, a meal, like, a night out as well. So was... oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so, like, it's I'm really... not ever going to live with those girls again now. Yeah, <laughs> like... you're not going to live in that house again. Which was so weird. Like, I was cleaning out the stuff in it last week. God, I've got so much crap in that house. Honestly, so many clothes I never wear. So I just sent, like, four bags to charity last week. I felt so sad. Um, but I was cleaning out the stuff, and I was like, this is such a horrible way to end it. Like, although yeah. uni's proper, like, done my head in, and I really wanted it to end, I didn't want it to end this way. Like, I wanted to actually see it out, and then I could say, yeah, yeah. my time at uni, like, I finished it good, like... And we did all these different things that we had planned and all this, but now we, I just sit at home. <laughs> Do you know what the one positive is about that? Not having to go to that house anymore. What? That bloody hill. Oh, God, yeah. For those of you... I'll who... never have to walk up that hill in my house again. <laughs> For those who know the Liverpool area well, it's, it's Copper's Hill, is that what it's called? Yeah. And it's like right by Lime Street, like, oh, and the Adelphi. It's like that hill. And after a night out all the time, instead of getting a taxi, we always used to walk all the way up to mine, like all of us as a group. And then everyone got a taxi from mine, but I was like, you're basically already home. <laughs> so it just That's benefited right. me because I didn't want to walk on my own. <laughs> and that you could never get a taxi straight away either because they're all in the centre. So it's yeah. all going to come out the centre to go to yours. <laughs> It's just it's been easier for all of us to stay. It was just yeah, a tradition. Like, we're, we're, it was... we, yeah, but like we always did it anyway. Yeah. But like, oh, and like you think it, you think when you're drunk, you wouldn't really oh, realize. It's like, worse. You know, but you know where worse. you are when you get to that hill. I have to carry. I used to have to carry my shopping up that hill. Two bags, a rucksack on. Like, oh my god! I literally almost. And when it's windy as well, it's such like a wind trap around there. Yeah. So like, it, it's that wind where it's sort of like when you lift your leg up to then extend it again, it hits against the other one, and you're like, oh, I'm literally gonna fall over here. So that was that was two years of my life doing that. And then I got a car, and then I went in the car shopping. So that was so much better. You had your car there for like. I know. Paid no, it was longer than that. It was a few months. Yeah, I paid for so much money. I'm not even gonna say how much it was for a car park space, and now I can't even use it. And my last rent instalment comes in that I have to pay on the first of April, and I'm not gonna be there. How stupid is that? Yeah. It's just not okay. Well. Sorry that we went on a bit of a rant. <laughs> yeah. I think we only actually spoke about sport for like 10 minutes. Yeah, but I think people just like to just have escape from reality and people just listen to auntie. something else. I, yeah. I, I 100% listen to someone trying yeah, stuff like this. Same. Hope you enjoy it anyway. Um, yeah. I think next week we might do something like, we'll do like a Q&A or something like that, maybe just something a little bit different. So then if you've got 
sport related questions or non sport related questions then um put them in the comments below we'll pick them out we'll answer them next week um but yeah thank you very much for watching thank you for listening hello to everyone on Acast and oh Spotify god. and iTunes oh my god not again <laughs> um, yeah thanks for watching remember to like the video comment subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell if you like Ding. um yeah if there's any like other video ideas that you think that would be good at anything below as well <laughs> please anything, anything yeah obviously all home based because we can't go anywhere all garden based all garden based all garden based very true um but yeah we'll see you all soon with a new video bye